I would like to begin by telling you all that I am a sleep enthusiast. I love it. I sleep wherever and whenever, which isn't in all honesty the most fantastic attribute when you're doing your A-levels. <laughs> Ask my chemistry teachers. However, in my defense, it is much needed, and very simply, I'm here to tell you why. Because as well as being a sleep enthusiast, I am a scientist. And not only do I enjoy engaging in the activity of sleep, I equally enjoy researching it. It's fascinating, and we're never taught about it in schools, despite it being an absolutely integral part of human biology. It's ridiculous, really. How can we spend a third of our lives sleeping like a log and barely know anything about it? To quantify that, by the way, if somebody lives to 75 years, they've spent 25 years asleep. A show of hands, who here believes that they don't get enough sleep? It's understandable. Sometimes life gets in the way of a good night's sleep. For example, any new parents in the room I'm sure understand all too well how seemingly innocent small children can very quickly become anyone's worst nightmare. When my little sister was born, my mother was practically nocturnal for the year. Sleep is often dismissed, but I'm of the opinion that it should be taken a lot more seriously than some of us realise. So, what happens when we don't sleep? 17 hours is usually when most people have had enough of staying awake. It is at this time that a lot of people conk out, and good thing too, because 17 hours straight of no sleep, you have an increased risk of a heart attack. If you are consistently only getting around six hours of sleep a night, your risk of having a stroke is elevated by four and a half times. At a day without sleep, cognitive impairments are similar to that of someone with 0.1% alcohol in their blood, which is considered legally drunk. As well as this, dampened brain activity, increased blood pressure, and rising cortisol levels are all among the symptoms you experience. Scared yet? A grueling 48 hours without a wink of sleep is when it starts getting really dangerous, because people have actually died from sleep deprivation at around this time. Decreased insulin, increased risk of diabetes, and ataxia can all be observed. And for those of you who aren't aware what ataxia is, it's essentially, if I was holding this pen, but not looking at it, I would have no way of knowing that it was, in fact, a pen. Skipping to 100 hours, the need to sleep overtakes the need to eat. As well as this, extreme hallucinations and paranoia occur, complete lack of cognitive function, chaos ensues. Overall, sleep deprivation causes us to recede into a depressed, moderately drunk and stressed head who can't remember what happened 10 minutes ago and thinks they might be seeing God. The longest a human has ever gone without sleep is around 11 days. And although I definitely wouldn't recommend trying it if you really want an idea of the experience, working the night shift in A&E for a week, I wager works just as well. So now the good news. When we do get sleep, it turns us into superheroes. You get all new abilities such as improved concentration and productivity, maximized athletic performance, stronger heart. It even helps us better understand our own emotions and response to social stimuli. So now the real issue. We all need more sleep. Look at the state of us. We're in a shambles. Night shifters. When was the last time you had a full night's sleep? Actually, don't answer that. It's probably so far in the past you've forgotten. Society is plainly not adapted to us and clearly doesn't want us to value our sleep nearly as much as we should. It's built solely around people who actually like getting up at six in the morning, even on a Saturday, and anyone I've met who does that is just weird. No offense to my dad, I see you. <laughs> Point is, the journey to becoming superhumans, living up to our full potential in an ideal utopia is only a decent night's sleep away if society can change to allow us to do so. And if you can now imagine how difficult it is for adults to function on, well, less than satisfactory amounts of sleep, imagine how tough it is for us teens. We've really got on the short end of the stick here. I mean, think about it. Aside from our biology, where our shifting circadian rhythm at once nullifies the concept that school at eight in the morning would ever be a good idea, teenagers by default need more sleep than adults. We enjoy sleeping in, partying late, we have unfathomable amounts of missing homework assignments and are forced to navigate the labyrinth that is social interaction every day of our lives. Developing brains, people. Surely you haven't forgotten what it's like to be in my shoes? I believe if I'm going to make any positive change in my career, it would be this. School should start and finish at least an hour later because if school starts at 10 a.m., the day becomes a lot more manageable. 
I have a chance to get my eight hours, have a lay-in, less grumpiness guaranteed, and everyone's a winner because trust me, with an extra hour of sleep in the mornings, the harrowing task that is dragging a teenager out of bed is suddenly not so bad. Science understands, so why can't schools?